<laughs> Praise the Lord. Ratchet Knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Blue Jr. and Brother Sister. We turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And it reads, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers, this is God's word. We give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in the precious name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jehovah God speaking to Abram and giving him an insight of something that is going to occur to his descendants, to his people. And in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, this is what Jehovah God speaking to Abram of what is to come. And he says in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed, this is the descendants of Abraham, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great suffering. So Jehovah God telling Abram about this future event where his descendants are going to be under the oppression of a nation that's not theirs, but God will judge this nation. And when all is said and done, they're going to be liberated with great substance. And how's this going to be done? Well, we saw in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it's going to be done. They're going to overcome him by the blood of their lamb and the word of their testimony, and they shall not love their life unto death. So, set this up. Now it is uh, four centuries later, and the descendants of Abram, the children of Israel, are under an oppressive uh, bondage by the king Pharaoh of Egypt who represents, if you will, the enemy, Satan. And he's holding the children of Israel, God's people, descendants of Abram, for 400 years under this oppressive affliction where they're experiencing um, mental anguish, where they're experiencing psychological and emotional turmoils. And not only that, with the back breaking slavery that they're undergoing, physical duress for 400 years. And so now God is now, as he did mention to Abram, that he's going to judge this nation that, 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 they're, that the children of Israel has been serving. And he's doing this in the form of a great man of God, Moses. Now, John chapter one, verse 17 tells us, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Moses, a uh, picture of the law, is now judging the nation of Egypt for these 400 years of oppressing God's people. And time after time, Moses would go to this mnemonic king of uh, Pharaoh and say, let my people go, let my people go. There were occasions that he just said, no, I'm not, who's, who's your God? And, and just mock, that, you know, no matter what the judgment was, whether it be turning water into blood, whether it be um, all the frogs that was infesting the nation of, of Egypt or, or lice that was just coming, you know, judgment after judgment, uh, this, this, this demonic king, a type of Satan, wouldn't let go of God's people. And and, and Moses would come again with, with the lice that was affecting the land of Egypt. Not affecting um, the, um, the children of Israel, but affecting the, the, the people of Egypt. And 
lice and then um, flies would be, swarms of flies would just come after every time that Moses would demand, let the people go, uh, the, the, the Pharaoh wouldn't. And swarms of flies. And then these swarms of flies would then affect the, the livestock of Egypt and, and their, their livestock started dying off. And, and no matter how much the, 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 the judgment that was coming against the nation of Egypt, the, 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 the king would not relinquish. And then there was more judgment. Uh, boils on the people's body. Uh, Hailstorms that started just coming down on the nation of Egypt. Uh, locusts that was, uh, you know, eating up all the, what the, that was left of the of their vegetation, which wasn't anything. And then, then came darkness in the land of Egypt, but not affecting the the people of God, the children of Israel. A darkness such that when if we look in Exodus chapter 10, and so they had all these judgments that was just coming in and they wouldn't let them, the, the, uh, the Pharaoh wouldn't let the people of God go. And this ninth judgment that came on to the, the nation of Egypt was such that the darkness, which as it was written in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21, where it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt, a darkness that was so supernatural that they could feel it. And he still wouldn't let them go. Verse 22 of Exodus chapter 10 says, And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness. In all the land of Egypt, three days. So this darkness for three days that was that you could feel it, and so supernatural that even if they lit a candle, it, it wouldn't light up because you could feel it, and they experiencing it for three days, and he still wouldn't let the people go. But then, even during that time, God goes to His people, the children of Israel, and he informs Moses. And it lets them know something, it reminds them. And in Exodus chapter 11, verse 1, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. So, got this one more plague. Because those nine plagues, one and let go. But this one plague, he's going to let go. He's going to thrust you out, God says to Moses. And he says this, verse 2 of Exodus chapter 1. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. So a reminder of what um, Jehovah God told Abram about they're going to come out with great substance. And so let's see. So between now this ninth judgment, now going to the tenth judgment. What does he inform his people? In verse, in Exodus chapter 12, you see what now God is telling his people and how this, how they're going to now be delivered. How in, verse, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 3, we say, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel. This is what God is telling Moses to tell all the people of Israel. Saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an old house. So a lamb. And the, the, the lamb is, is, a, is a picture of the sacrifice, a lamb. And watch this, verse 4. Of Exodus chapter 12. And if the household be too little for the lamb. So it went from a lamb, which is a picture of, of, of the sacrifice, and then to the lamb. John the Baptist said in John chapter 1, verse 29, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Exodus chapter 12, verse 4. And if the household be too little for the land, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the land. And then watch this. 
verse 5 of Exodus chapter 12. Your land. So it went from a lamb, which was a picture of the, 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 the sacrifice, to the lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That the lamb is your lamb. It takes away your sins, past, present, and future. <laughs> Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat, and ye shall keep it un until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So you take this lamb, you know, this, this, this lamb you, you keep, and, 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 and that, that you had, and if you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 3, where it says, in the 10th day of this month, so the 10th day of this month, and then you keep it till the 14th day of this month, of this land. And so you, you have it for the 10th day, 11th day, 12th day, 13th day, 14th day. That's five days. Five, the number of grace. <laughs> and so you have this land. You, you tend to it, you keep it for five days, and then after that, at the evening time, you kill it. And when you kill this lamb, this lamb, this precious lamb, pointing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you 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 were to, to, to take its blood, drain out its blood, and then you'll take its head, its legs, and all the inside, the putrids. Because again, under that oppression of the demonic king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, that put you through mental anguish, emotional, psychological turmoil, and even physical and hardships and duress for those 400 years. You take the, the, the carcass of that land and, and, and you roast it the same way when Jesus Christ was on the cross. And took all our sins and our iniquities and our transgressions. And the fiery judgment came on him. And he took it. And and, and just as, a, as, as, as that roast of that is taking all that mental anguish. And the, the emotional and psychological and, uh, and psychogenic uh, turmoil that you have gone through. And the physical hardship of all those 400 years under this demonic pharaoh. A picture of of, of 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 Satan. You need to take that one, and, and you you, you and, and 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 you partake of that that roasted lamb. Now now you're going to instead of experiencing the mental anguish, you're going to mention peace. Instead of that emotional psychological turmoil, there's now joy. And then the the physical uh, hardship and the rest, you're going to now have strength. And so we see, and this is when you take that roasted lamb. And then what about with the, with, the, with the blood that's been drained? Well, it says in verse 7 of Exodus chapter 12, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the house, wherein they shall eat it, when they eat uh, partake of the roasted lamb. And, what, and how to do that? Well, Exodus chapter 12 verse 22 tells us, and ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. And hyssop is like a leafy plant. It, it, it's leafy. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin. So you take all the blood from that lamb. You put it in a basin. And you take this leafy plant, the, the, the hyssop. And you dip it in the basin full of blood. And strike the linton and the two side posts with blood that is in the basin. So you take the basin. You take this leafy plant, you dip it, and now the hyssop has the blood, and you strike, you go outside and you strike the, the two sides of the door and the upper part of the door. With the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. So you stay there until the morning. After you, you, you go outside and you... You, you, you sprinkle the blood on the doorpost, on the top, and on the side, on the two sides. You go in and you don't 
leave until the morning and you partake of that roasted lamb and that, that roasted lamb so that like all that 400 years that, that the children of Israel been under that hardship and oppression and bondage of, of Satan, of the Pharaoh. Now you partake for your peace, for your strength, for your joy. And then watch this. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. And thus shall ye eat with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And watch this. For I will pass through the land of Egypt. Now, now, now that, that tenth judgment is going to come. And will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, and I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the and verse 13 of Exodus chapter 12. And the blood shall be to you for a token. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and when we love our life, not unto death. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house and where ye are, where you're inside that house. And when I see the blood, when he sees the blood, not your works, not your good name, not your bad name, not your denomination, not, 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 not anything. No, no. When he sees the blood, when God sees the blood, because God honors the blood. When he sees the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And why the land of Egypt? They don't have the blood. And, 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 and we have the blood in our house. Because why? We took that hyssop that, with, 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 with a basin of blood and we dipped it. The, 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 the hyssop and we and, and we sprinkled it and we we struck the door posts and and, and the, the, when the judgment came it passed over the apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 5 verse 9 much more they are justified by his blood and they're, they're saved from the wrath of him the blood you know David said in Psalm chapter 59, 51, verse 7, he says, purge me with hyssop, this hyssop, and I will be clean and wash me and I will be whiter than snow. That hyssop with the blood. And, and what's, the, what's the hyssop a picture of? It, it, the, the hyssop is a picture of our tongue, the leafy. And so when our tongue is, is speaking the blood, we're applying the blood to to whatever situation, whatever circumstances. You could, you could, you, you, uh, uh, the, the, the blood, when you speak the blood over your, your family, over your, your, your finances, over your marriage, over every area, every avenue, every aspect, every arena, every affair of your life, when you use that, that, that hyssop, the, the, your, your tongue, and speaking the blood, you are applying the blood, the same way that they the, they're using the hyssop and applying it to the household. You use your tongue and speak the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you're applying the blood. And God will see it, and He will He and He will He and, and He He will do He'll see it the same way that He sees the blood. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. He won't there won't be any judgment on what you speak of. When you use your tongue, that hyssop, to speak about the blood, his blood. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. It doesn't speak judgment like Moses under the law. You see, what they were experiencing was judgment. It was death, condemnation. But the blood of Jesus Christ, it speaks where they were liberated. Where were they set free? Where they were? Where were they strengthened? When they were partaking of that land, then no, 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 no mental anguish, no, no, no uh, emotional turmoil, no physical distress, because they walked out. 
Because uh, because in, in in Psalms chapter one hundred five verse thirty seven, listen to what the listen to what Psalm chapter one hundred five verse thirty seven says. And he brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. And they loved their life not unto death. I don't love my life unto death. I love my life unto life, the life. And that life is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how you overcome the enemy. By the blood of the land, by the word of your testimony. And that word of testimony comes from that tongue, the, the, the hyssop. In the same way that the, 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 the person from the household would take that hyssop and, 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 and sprinkle and strike that doorpost. You could do the same thing. Just speak the blood over it. Plead the blood like they did. And that is how you overcome the enemy. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him. They overcame the devil. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb. By his blood that forgave us of all our sins, past, present, and future. When we partook of that roasted lamb. And then we'd be uh, uh, no, more, uh, no more anguish and turmoil and anxiety. No. Now we experience joy where we put on our, we could put on our shoes and put on, get ready our staff and put our belts on because we're going to be get ready to be delivered because the Lord is our Passover. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimonies, that, that hiss of that's, that's just preaching and teaching the gospel of grace, the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work of what he did on the cross, that, that hiss of and spread it and spread it. And when we love our life, not unto the death, mm -mm, not unto the death, but we love our life unto the life. And that life is in Christ, our Lord, our soon to coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his confidence to you. May the Lord give you speech. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified and the precious and the powerful Christ's name of his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you false in the presence of his Lord, both glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony, and when you love your life unto life. <laughs> and that life, that the life is Jesus Christ. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God bless love.